Today's episode of the Gold Cast is sponsored by Preseason Angst. I don't know about you guys how you guys feel, but I'm ready to go. Once game three ends, I'm like, can we just do we have to go through this? Do we have to go through this one more time? I'm sure that in a much earlier, earlier era, this game four was maybe more relevant. Here's what here's what I think is weird. And, and then before we get into the show, here's what I think is really weird. Football is so less violent now than it was 30 years ago, right? Like 30 years ago, people, the, the giant hits were the highlights. The, the, the head-crushing, bone-smashing hits of defensive players were some of the most fun highlights to watch and some of the most popular highlights to see, right? And football now is so much less violent. Like they've took, they've taken out, so, you know, they've changed the rules in so many different ways to protect the players, protect the quarterbacks, and they make the game just a quote unquote safer game. Yet, everyone's gotten so paranoid about getting hurt in preseason. I, I just kind of wonder what was the narrative 30 years ago? What was the narrative in the 80s and, and in the 90s? Like, what, what were guys just getting carted off the field left and right in preseason? I mean, if, if guys are paranoid now, what was it like back then? And were they paranoid? Was that even a thing? I'm just not really sure. I don't know. If anyone from the, if anyone's older than me uh, by 10 or 15 years, let me know what you think. This is the Gold Cast. Welcome. You can find our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. I guess Apple Podcasts is the correct way to say that. I don't care. I still say iTunes. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, YouTube.com slash the Gold Cast, Facebook.com slash the Gold Cast, Twitter at the underscore gold cast you can find the gold cast wherever all podcasts are sold for free uh, we are actually going to be moving on to spotify here pretty soon there's a couple little hoops we got to jump through but this is a thing this is happening the gold cast will be on spotify very soon i'm really excited about that super super excited you can find me at rudy solis three on instagram and at rudy solis three r D on Twitter. It is uh, very common for me to be commenting on a lot of the 49er fan pages. You can see me all over the Warriors ones too. It just depends on the season. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me a lot. So if you want to chat with me directly, you can, you can always find my comments under a lot of the big 49er fan pages. I follow all of them. All right. So this is a solo mission, guys. It is just me. Candlestick Will, not here. Raymond Solis, one, not here. But you get the hostess with the mostess, the number one, the greatest professor of fanalism in the game. Classes in session. Let's go. San Francisco, are you ready? This is the Gold Cast. <laughs> Boom. Welcome to another edition of the Gold Cast. We are the voice of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Solis III. And with me is you. You are my co-host. You, my faithful Gold Cast listeners. Gold Cast Nation in the building. 2030 mission. Let's go. All right. So game three of preseason is in the books. And what did I say last week to you guys? What did I tell you guys last week? I said, hey, everybody relax. Let's all calm down, okay? Jimmy G was out there for three series. Guys only had 316 snaps in the league. He's been out of the league for almost a year. Got to cut the guy a little bit of slack. All over the pages. Oh, we need to, we, you know, we need to start Nick Mullins. Let's not forget Nick Mullins played for almost the entire season last year, and we only won three games. Okay, so let's all, everyone pump the brakes. Pump the brakes a little bit. I love Nick Mullins. Kid's got a lot of heart, okay? Great backup quarterback. Uh, maybe even one day could be a starter. But let's not forget, as quickly as everyone was ready to just th throw Jimmy G into the fire, throw him into the dumpster, let's not forget that the guy that everyone was saying they wanted up there couldn't win a game, barely won any games. Okay, so, and, and not not that that's entirely his fault. I'm just saying, you know, let's, let's cut the man a break. So going back to Jimmy G, I told you all to relax. It was going to be fine. I, you know, I, it was annoying to see, um, annoying from a fan perspective, but from a fanalism, from a professor of fanalism perspective, it was fine. It's not a big deal. 
And then you have this week, uh, this last week right here against Kansas City, Jimmy G goes 14 for 20, 188 yards and a touchdown. First drive looks a little funky. And then that, that second drive, that second drive, he really puts it together, makes some beautiful passes, and you start to see the Jimmy G that we have come to know and love and expect. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jimmy G. I'm going to say this right now. Here's my, my bold, quote-unquote, bold prediction. It's not that bold. But this is exactly what I think is going to happen this season. And I've been I, I'm pretty sure I said this last week, but if not, I'm cementing it in stone this week. Because I was saying this last week as well. Off air. Jimmy G is going to f- find his footing somewhere around end of September, somewhere between weeks four, five, and six. Somewhere in there, he is going to really get in sync with this team, really get in sync with Shanahan, get in sync with being a pro starter in the NFL week in and week out. And you know what's going to happen from that point on in the season? Jimmy G is going to ball. He's going to ball. Okay, not just ball. Ball. All right, he is going to ball. I'm telling you right now. I really believe it. I truly do. And it has nothing to do with either of these games. Kansas City didn't sway my my beliefs in it. Neither did uh, game two against the Broncos. Neither of the preseason games have swayed my belief that this is going to happen. One hasn't made me more confident. One didn't make me less confident. I just believe this is what's going to happen. Because he just needs a little bit of time. Look at what Nick Mullins did. Going back to Nick Mullins, let's let's talk a little good. I, I love Nick Mullins. So, but let's talk about a little a little good thing Nick Mullins did. Look at Nick Mullins against the Raiders, right? And look what Shanahan was able to do with his third string quarterback, keeping that offense afloat. You know, the defense is probably more responsible for the losses last year than any other uh, any other side of the team. It was probably the defense more than anything. They just could could not protect the lead. But m- m- he did a lot with a third third string quarterback who's probably going to be the second string this this year. Imagine what's going to happen with Shanahan and Jimmy G. Jimmy G is not a backup quarterback. He is a starter. He is a more than capable starter. He's not just a good starter. He has the ability to be really good, maybe even great. He is he has that potential. It is in him. It is right there for him to take. So, we've seen what Shanahan has done with handcuffed teams with virtually no real starter, consistent starter level talent, except maybe George Kittle. You know, uh, uh, Breda, you know, Breda went healthy. Breda is really good. Goodwin was really streaky. Pettis was a rookie. Mullins was a third, third string rookie. And he managed to keep, he managed to week in and week out, put together extremely competent defensive plans that did really good jobs against a lot of other NFL teams. Defense couldn't protect the lead, and we paid for it. But in general, you have a team here, you have a team before that Shanahan was able to competently put together. And now you have Tevin Coleman there. Pettis is in his second year. Breda's back. Goodwin's here. You know, you've got Debo Samuel, Jalen Hurd, two, the two rookie kids. I always want to call them the twins. The twins are here. And and there, there's an opportunity there for them to to really uh, you know to, to really ball out. You you have a lot of weapons here. You have McGlinchey coming into his second year. Staley is the mainstay on the other side. This offense is really starting to come along. And I think now that we have that, imagine what he can do with Jimmy G. If he was able to do all that with so many so so many few pieces, if Shanahan was able to do what he did with the offense with so many pieces out, so many pieces not there last year. What is he going to do with all the pieces here? What's going to happen with Jimmy G as we go through the season? I already told you. By week four, five, six, somewhere in there. So, like, he's going to start to look really impressive. Like, start to, like, oh, wow, it seems like he's getting, yeah, he's going to have some big moments, some highlight moments. You'll be like, oh, wow, yeah, he's kind of finding his rhythm. And then he's just going to get lock and sink. And once he gets locked in, and he sinks, and he's in, it's on. Jimmy G will ball. He will ball. So just have the faith. Stay patient. I don't think, I think if you want to get excited over the Kansas City game, great, great. Get excited. That's not a problem. You know, whatever. But I don't think, 
La- I don't think Kansas City or Denver should shake your faith in the ability of this team to make it happen. So that's all, that's all that matters. So that's all that matters. Just just know, just just have the faith that Jimmy G is going to be there because he is. He's going to ball. He's going to be really good this year. I really think so. As long as he can stay healthy, as long as the, the the offensive line can protect him and keep him upright, and he doesn't do anything crazy, I have no I have no I have no reason to believe that he's not going to ball. He's going to be really really good, and this is an opportunity for the team to really turn around. The other side of the ball that continues to impress me is the uh, the depth on the on the D line. Like, it's taken us three years to get here. It's taken three years. This is a team that was absolutely decimated, decimated when Shanahan and John Lynch came here. It wasn't like the Trent Baalke Harbaugh era where this team was predicted under under Singletary to be the first in the NFC West the, his last year. La, the ESPN analysts, I remember watching it on television on ESPN, them saying that the 49ers where they were predicting the 49ers would be the first in the NFC West. With all the weapons that they had on offense and defense, this team should has should be able to take the West. And then we didn't. We absolutely were horrific. And then Singletary got fired. And then I was at the fi- I was at that final game in Candlestick against Arizona. And I remember thinking, we'll be back. It'll it'll be fine. And then Harbaugh and ba- Balky came. And they inherited a team that was stacked. This isn't that team. This was not that team. It is taking us taken us three years of trial and error, of some misfires, of some successes, of putting together, I think, a team that looks so far in preseason pretty competent on both sides of the ball. Now, what did I say before? I said this at the beginning of preseason, and I will say this every year as I do the podcast until the day I die, because I'm probably going to do the gold cast for 100 years. Well, no, I'm not going to live 100 years. I'm going to live... I'm going to live like 90 years. So I said this before. If you are really good at something in preseason, you have the chance to be okay at it in the regular season. If you are really bad at something in preseason, you are going to suck in the regular season. So the defense, the defensive line, and just the defense, and that front seven has looked extremely impressive. This whole this whole this whole preseason, the depth is really impressive. I'm I'm very impressed with them, and this is without DeForest Buckner, D Ford, and Bosa. So when all of that is put together, when those three monsters come in, come on and play play this season, I I really think that that defense is gonna is also going to ball. They really are. I'm very, very impressed with what the games that they have put together, the amount of pressure that they've been putting on quarterbacks. Again, they look really good at it, so they chance to be okay at it in the regular season. And, you know, we were one of the worst, if not the worst in the league, at rushing the quarterback. So I'll take okay or pretty good over that. So I, I, that part is probably the most imp- impressive part to me of this of this preseason um this preseason the preseason storylines i think that the de- the defense the depth of the defense has been the thing that people haven't really seemed to talk about a lot and i think they've played really well and jimmy g is going to be fine but yeah fun game a fun little game there in kansas it was nice uh, kansas city nice to have jimmy g go back to the place where he got hurt he talked about it on the press conference afterwards he kind of walked over to the spot you know kind of soaked it in i don't know if he said a prayer i don't know what he did and then he, then he went, then he, then he let it go, and he went back out of the game. And he, the kid has just got a good head on his shoulders. I really like this kid. The way he goes through his progressions, the way he handles the pocket, the way the way he just goes through his checkdowns. I've I've heard this before, and and I've said it myself. I haven't really seen someone do it at that level since Joe. And I don't mean that he's going to be Joe Montana and win four Super Bowls. I'm just talking about the mechanics of the way he controls the pocket and the way he goes through his reads reminds me of joe it's the last time i saw a quarterback do it at that level you know uh cap really struggled with that alex struggled with it um he got better as time went on but still you know had a heart of a lion but you know didn't have the maybe the the talent to consistently pull it off at at a very high level i would say the the most joe montana-esque i've ever seen alex smith was of course the game we, we did we did the 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 gold dive on the uh the 49ers Saints playoff game from 2011. That game was 
the most he channeled his inner Joe Montana. That was the most Joe Montana esque I've ever seen Alex Smith play. He uh, he really he really got fired up as the game got on. He got better and better, and by the fourth was you know that that last drive was incredible. Anyways, I'm digressing. But the way Jimmy G goes through his checkdowns is 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 reminds me of Joe. It's just the last time we've seen something like that happen, and it's very impressive. And I'm excited. We only have one more game, and then on to Tampa. We will be in Tampa uh, on uh, September the 8th. I can't wait. So also, also I told you my schedule completely changes and Sundays will be free and I will, we will be back to a Sunday night post-game reaction show, which is, you know, I thank you guys for holding on and being real patient. We're still trying to make sure that we're always delivering Goldcast episodes to you somewhere between Monday and Tuesday, but Sunday nights will be back very, very soon. I can't wait. So going back to this Niner, this uh, going back to the oh, the Niners. We've got one more game, and then it's on, and then then then, then it's time to shine. And I'm definitely excited. I'm super nervous, I like 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 not nervous, butterflies, anxious, anxious. I I just want to see. I just want to know. And I really just hope this team stays healthy. They have obviously completely renovated the strength and conditioning program this year. Uh, they it looks like the the acquisitions of these coaches from other leagues and other teams has really, really brought the 49ers into a, a 21st, 21st century mode in terms of looking at how, you know, they're looking at the last past seven years and looking at how injury and conditioning uh, relationships and seeing, you know, what they could do. And, and the 49ers have taken a lot of precautions. And overall, in general, it's been a good, pretty good, healthy preseason. And it looks like we're going to be able to move into game one with all of our starters intact, and that is great. I'm excited. I'm nervous. So I want to touch on something that is completely out of the Bay Area, but I kind of wanted to give my two cents on it because the obviously, like most sports fans, most football fans, I was pretty shocked by Andrew Luck's retirement on Saturday. No one saw that coming. I didn't see it coming. And I wanted to talk about this. I've talked about this a little before, but I used to be a pro b-boy back in the day. So I used to I used to break dance and compete and you know compete for money from basically like late late ninety eight was when I first started dipping my toe in to about like two thousand one two thousand two you know uh, and that and then that pretty much marked the end of it I I went we were in the middle of training and I was working on a break dancing move called Air Flare which is uh, if you've if you go type in online, it's, just, it's the one you've you've probably all seen it if you've seen breakdancing clips. Uh, it looks kind of like you're in a handstand and you're kind of almost horizontal and you're spinning in the air. You're twisting in the air over and over and over. Your hands are twisting hand over hand over hand. And your hands are keeping your body in the air. It's beautiful, badass b-boy move. I spent about a year working on it. And then I got the move. And in week three, I was in my garage doing my seventh rotation. I was doing seven air flares in a row. One, two, three. And on the seventh rotation, I my body turned, but my right arm did not. It stayed, and my body moved, and my arm died. And I got a light tear in my rotator cuff. I couldn't really move that shoulder above my... I couldn't move my elbow above my shoulder for a year. Basically sidelined me for an entire year. Uh, it took about six years for the pain to go away. It didn't really go away until I was in my 30s, and and I, and I was going through some re, rehabilitate re, rehabilitative exercises with a personal trainer, and that's really what finally got the shoulder to for the pain to release. But this year, this past year, when I went when I joined joined back to CrossFit, I actually uh, I aggravated my my uh, rotator cuff again. Uh, in the first three weeks, I had to go and get a cortisone shot, and it's been fine ever since. But it kind of gave me flashbacks, and I got a little depressed and nervous about it. But I'll say this: the reason I bring up that story is because that that injury basically ended my breakdancing career, and it took me years to get over that. I was really, I was always really, it was always kind of like this big what if. I was always like really kind of hurt and sad that that. I felt like my my career had been taken from me, and I felt like I didn't have a, the chance to leave on my own terms. That I was kind of told by my body, by the universe, that this was done, and that was a really hard pill to swallow. 
and it was really tough. And Andrew Luck here, when I saw him on that podium talking, I just I could relate to the feelings that he was experiencing, you know. And it really always it always really gets me when a when an athlete has to leave due to injury, that their careers are cut short by injuries. And he was kind of talking about how much his his body hurt and how it was affecting his love for the game. And I get, I got it. I totally got it. And I, I just think sometimes, sometimes people forget, mostly look talking about the Indiana Colts fans, people forget that, you know, these athletes are humans and you, you, you can, you can take, you can take all the precautions in the world and you can be as healthy as you can possibly be. But sometimes accidents just happen. And, you know, he's been hit more than almost any other quarterback in the last seven years. They were, you know, they've been throwing the stats up all week, all over ESPN and Bleacher Report, you know, about how many times he's been hit. And I think the Indianapolis Colts didn't really do him any favors, especially in those first couple of years when they, they never put an O line around him. You know, they got him, they got a lot, got him a lot of weapons, offensive weapons, but no O line. And we've talked about the, this a lot with Jimmy G. I've said this for the last year and a half that if Jimmy G's grandmother goes in for a hug, I want McGlinchey there jumping in the middle and slapping her arms down and saying, sorry, no one can touch Jimmy G. No one's allowed to touch Jimmy G for the next 10 years. I, if if his if he has a, a a wife and his wife goes in to kiss him on their wedding day, I want Staley to throw a shoulder and knock her down. We've got to protect Jimmy G at all costs. <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> I'm kidding. But that's that's what I'm saying is like the... the uh, Andrew Luck got hit a lot. And this is what happens when you don't protect your quarterback the way you're supposed to. And here now, his career is done due to injury. And I really related to it. And it's a real thing. And I don't know if any of you have ever been hurt, injured to the level where you can't do the physical sport you love to do the most. You understand what I'm talking about. And so my heart goes out to Andrew Luck. I, uh, I'm sad. I'm sad for him. You know, I'm sad for the Indianapolis Colts organization. I'm not sad for the Indianapolis Colts fans because they clearly showed to me that they don't give a F right now, which is fine. Then if you don't give a F, I don't give an F. But I do feel bad for, for luck because I, I thought the guy was going to end his career with at least, at least a minimum of one or two rings. And this year they had a really good shot of going. So anyways, heart goes out to you, Andrew. Um, I know you probably don't listen to this, but may, whoever the, uh, Maybe the uh, the Indianapolis Colts cast, the the Colts cast. I don't know what I guess they'd call that the blue and white cast, whatever the hell that's called. Their goal, their podcast would be called. You know, uh, if you hear this, I feel I feel for your boy Andrew Luck. That that that's a bummer, real bummer. But uh, I'll tell you what, sure didn't feel bad for my dad who drafted Andrew Luck in our family league, the Solis family league that we have. That we uh, it's our second year now that we've had this league. I've been doing fantasy for like five or six years now, but we now have a Solis league and. Didn't feel bad for my dad drafting Andrew Luck. You know, last thing, you know what else? Since he's not on the podcast, Raymond drafted Ezekiel Elliott and Melvin Gordon. Are either of those two guys going to play this year? I don't really know. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, yeah, that all happened at our family draft. It was it was a wild one this year. It was really fun. Anyways, I hope your drafts are going well. We will be back uh, very soon to talk more Bay Area sports. We'll talk maybe a little bit of uh, Hard Knocks and some Brick by Brick because I've been enjoying both those shows. I don't know if you're watching Hard Knocks or Brick by Brick, but Hard Knocks, I get to sit and watch the uh, the ever, ever going, ongoing saga of drama, filled drama that always seems to happen and follow the Raiders. And of course, I get to watch Brick by Brick, which is nice because Brick by Brick, you know, is the 49ers one on YouTube. It's basically the same show, only you could t- because they can control everything you see. There's no drama, <laughs> so it's kind of more of a puff piece. But I really, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy watching Brick by Brick. If you haven't watched Brick by Brick, 49ers show on YouTube, it's great. I love it. Uh, so we'll, we're going to talk some Hard Knocks and some Brick by Brick because it's been interesting to watch the parallel of these two shows because they're kind of almost in sync. I think they're actually are in sync episode by episode. All right. So concludes another edition of the Gold Cast. We are the voice of the Bay. I'm your host. Rudy Suisse III, and with me was you. We'll see you next time. Same gold cast time, same gold cast channel. This is, is the gold cast.